children. Uh, the location is Marlboro College. My name is Rosalie Smith, and today's production crew is Willow Romo on video camera, and on audio recorder, Willow Romo, and on still camera, Roxanne Burt. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your background. Have you always lived in Marlboro, or did you move here from someplace else? I moved here from someplace else, from originally from Los Angeles. When did you move to Marlboro? In 1973. What is your physical address in Marlboro? On North Pond Road, 321 North Pond Road. What are some of the reasons you moved here? Well, the primary reason is that I had a job at Marlboro College, and we came here for that. Where specifically in Marlboro do you live? On North Pond Road. Um, what are your parents' names, and what were their careers? Well, my father's name was Jerry, and he was a doctor. He was an internist, and um, my mother is Ruth and she didn't have a career outside of the house. Where did you live as a child? I lived in Los Angeles. How would you describe yourself as a child? Well, that's a good question. I'd say that I was quiet. I had a lot of friends, but I wasn't that outgoing, I guess I would say. I liked being able to ride my bike and go exploring uh, on my bike. We lived near UCLA, which had a big campus and a lot of places to, to go when I was a kid. How many brothers or sisters do you have in one of the names? I have one sister, and she's four and a half years younger than I am. Her name is Susan. Where does she live now? She lives in New York City. What high school did you go to? Uh, my high school was University High School in Los Angeles. Um, would you describe yourself differently as a teenager than when you were a child? Hmm. I don't know. I think pretty similar, actually. How old you are now? I'm 70. What is your partner's name? My wife's name is Felicia. Where is she from? She's also from Los Angeles. We met in high school. What career has she been involved with? She is a teacher and was a special educator for many, many years and is now retired. What are your children's names? Our daughter is Joanna and our son is Daniel. Who were their teachers when they attended Marlboro School? Ooh, you're going to make me remember that? Uh, well, they had many teachers when they were here. Um, it was quite a while ago, so... Um, Mr. Mr. Cole was the principal when Joanna was here, and she had him for the 7th and 8th grade, and Mrs. Barton uh, was here as the principal after that. Uh, boy. Daniel had uh, Mr. Edelstein in, in junior high, and uh, I'm trying to remember, he had Mr. Esau, he had Mrs. Nero in, the, I think, the first and second grade, he had, uh, uh, well, it's hard to remember all the teachers that they had. What are each of them doing in their lives now? Well, Joanna it lives in Wisconsin, and she is a biologist, and she studies trout, and she works for the state of Wisconsin. And Daniel uh, studies classics. He has a degree in classics, and he is teaching classics right now. You also have grandchildren. What are their names and ages? Where do they go to, where do they attend school? Where do they, <clears throat> well, in Wisconsin, um, Noah and Maya, and they, uh, Noah is nine, Maya is twelve, and they, uh, 
Maya just started junior high in Wisconsin, and Noah is in school at Emerson Elementary School, which is right across the street from where they live in New York. Anatole um, is eight, and uh, he goes to a public school in New York that has a bilingual program in French, because uh, my daughter-in-law, his mother, is French, and um, they want him to be bilingual, so he's in a bilingual school program. And Balti, who is Daniel's stepson, Marianne's son, um, is in high school in, in, in Brooklyn. Over the years, you have had a number of Marble Town voluntary jobs. Yep. On what town board have you served? Well, uh, way back when our kids were at MES, I was uh, worked with the PNF quite a lot. But in town, I've been I was on the planning commission for about ten years, and I was on the hogback committee that helped to raise money to purchase the hogback property for the town. Um, I'm on the historical society board right now. What are some of the reasons why you have volunteered? Well, that's a good question. I think that it's, uh, this is the kind of community that really depends on members taking part in making the community work, and it's something that I'm particularly interested in, in doing and in seeing uh, be successful. I'm interested just sort of in my own life and teaching and otherwise in land conservation, and so working on the Planning Commission and the Hogback Commission seem to be good, good opportunities for me and I think helpful for the town as well. I'd like to ask you some questions today about your working life. Okay. Would you begin by explaining a little bit about what field of economics includes and why it's important? Okay, well that's a good question. Um, it's interesting because teaching at Marlboro, maybe you're going to ask about that later, but teaching at Marlboro, uh, there, the faculty really is more or less one person for each field. So while I've been teaching here, I've been covering pretty much the whole field of economics, um, which I think is an essential subject for understanding our society and the choices that we face. Economics is the study of how different societies and cultures provide for their livelihoods, um, who, how things get produced, how they get distributed, um, sort of who gets what. Are things equally distributed or are they unequally distributed? Um, it's a very important subject. Um, how did your interest in economics develop? Uh, it was somewhat accidental, I guess I would have to say. I took an economics course in high school, and then I guess because it was somewhat familiar to me, I took an economics course my first semester at college, and I got very, very interested in the subject. And it gave me an opportunity to study a lot of different things that I was interested in studying. And I got more committed to um, the subject. and. Then I decided to pursue graduate study, um, and then I came here. When did you decide that you would devote your time to it? I guess when I was an undergraduate. I wasn't really sure. Uh, by the time I got to graduate school, I wasn't really sure that I made the right choice, but then I decided that I had, and I stuck with it. So it was when I was an undergraduate. Or universities have you attended? I went to the University of California at Berkeley for my undergraduate, and I went to Yale University where I did my PhD. What were the main subject areas you studied at university? Well, in graduate school, it was an economics degree, so I was studying mostly economics, but I also took some anthropology and I took some classes at the forestry school 
in wildlife management and in land use planning. As an undergraduate, I did courses that were in economics because that was my major, but I also did uh, some art courses, some studio art courses, and other social sciences and history, and a whole variety of, of different subjects as an undergraduate. You have, you have a doctoral degree in economics. What is your thesis about it? The thesis? Mm -hmm. I was interested in environmental history, and I was especially interested in wildlife. And the thing that I wanted to know about wildlife was, among other things, how did we end up with the kind of regulations and laws about wildlife that we have in most of the United States? Who has the, what rights do wildlife have? What rights do people have to hunt or to keep animals or to enjoy? seeing animals or interacting with them and so I was interested in the whole question of how people and animals relate to each other. Did you always feel that you wanted to teach at the college level or did you consider other levels such as high school? I didn't really consider high school. I think that once I was in graduate school I decided that teaching college was the thing I wanted to do. How did you come to Marlboro College to teach economics? Well, it was an interesting story. Most of the people who were in graduate school with me were interested in going to big universities or interested in working for government or working for businesses. And I knew that I wanted to teach in a small college that focused on interdisciplinary study. And I didn't really know anything about Marlboro at the time. And I asked friends and other people I knew if they could recommend some schools that they thought might be interesting for me. And there were a number of schools that people recommended, and Marlboro was one of them. And I wrote letters to those school schools looking to see whether they might have faculty openings. And as it turned out, Marlboro was looking for an economist. So that was very fortunate. And I came for an interview and they offered me the job. And that was in 1973. What was the application interview and acceptance process like? Well, it was sort of curious because uh, Marlboro hadn't really advertised. And so when I wrote a letter to the dean wanting to know if there were any positions available, there weren't really any positions available, but as it turns out, the college was looking for an economist, they just didn't really know it yet. So they invited me to come, and they offered me the job based on coming up to visit the campus and meeting with the faculty and meeting with students. So it wasn't really a competitive process, as it turns out. They were looking for somebody. I came at the right moment, and uh, they offered me the job. In what year did you accept the position? That was in 1973. What is it about Marlboro College that caused you to want to teach here, and why have you continued to teach here? Right. Well, I didn't really know when I first came that I would want to continue to teach here. It was somewhat of an experiment for us. You know, we grew up on the West Coast, and we never lived in a rural town before, and never lived in a place where winters were so uh, severe, I guess I would say. So we weren't really sure that this was a place that we would want to stay. It turned out, though, that uh, it was just a wonderful place to teach in terms of the opportunities that it gave me to design my own curriculum and work individually with students who were engaged and excited about learning. And because of the independent nature of the program here, um, Students taught me a lot as well, because in order for me to help them learn, I had to learn from them what they were interested in and what they already knew about the subject. So it was just a very, uh, was a perfect place for me given my, given my interests. Well, you have recently retired from full-time teaching. For how many years have you taught here? 
Well, I taught from 1973 until about 2013, so 40 years. And then the person, the economist who was hired to teach in my place, only stayed at the college two years. And so um, I had the opportunity to come back and teach a course this semester so that there was some economics being offered. So I'm teaching now, again. Over the years, what are some examples of courses have you taught? Well, I've taught quite a range of courses, ranging from uh, courses about environmental economics and policy to courses on land use and land use control, on uh, uh, wildlife policy, environmental history, comparative economic systems, um, lots of courses on economic development, quite a range of courses. Which have been among your favorites and why? The courses? Well, I think the courses that are somewhat interdisciplinary, that connect to the interests that I had when I first came to the college in environmental issues, um, are the ones that I found most engaging, and I suppose that would include the environmental economics and policy, of course, that I've done on, on wildlife policy and law, um, and I think those are courses that also seem to engage students, which means that they're more meaningful and enjoyable for me to teach. What course are you teaching this semester? Right now I'm teaching an introductory course called Economic Systems, which looks at some basic perspectives in economics that have to do with how different kinds of economies are organized, who does what kind of work, and what kind of exchange relationships there are, and so on. What are some of the ideas you want your students to understand about the subject matter of the course? Well, aside from the general interest that I hope that they take away in the subject matter of economics, I want them to understand that there are real consequences of the way that economies are organized and the kind of policies that are adopted. They have real consequences for how we treat our natural resources, for how we treat each other, for what kind of services we expect to provide for one another through government or through volunteering. Um, the kind of the way that economists analyze questions like that gives a lot of insight into the choices that we have about all of those things. What interdisciplinary classes have you been part of? Well, most of the ones that I mentioned are interdisciplinary, but there are, I've also on occasion taught with other faculty members um, as well. So I'm not sure if that's what you mean, but many of the courses that I teach are interdisciplinary, and those are ones that I mentioned before. I think to do with environmental issues, wildlife. Would you explain? Uh, would you explain a bit about your favorite one? Boy, that's hard because in 40 years I've taught a lot of courses, and sometimes. I repeat them. In fact, often I've repeated them, but there are many, many over the years. So my favorite one is, is pretty hard to say because, you know, it depends quite a lot on which students I happen to have. A good group of students who are engaged with the material and who are thoughtful and, and so on can make any class that I teach seem like my favorite one. So it's pretty hard to say, I guess. But I don't know how I choose my favorite class. Have you taught elsewhere in your career? If yes, where? I haven't really. I came here as my first teaching job. I was a teaching assistant when I was a graduate student, so I did some teaching when I was at Yale. But um, relatively little. I was mostly assisting other faculty. Um, and since I've been at Marlboro, I wasn't necessarily expecting to stay all this time. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to teach elsewhere, so 
It's only really been Marlboro. If you could teach for one year at any college or university anywhere in the world, which one would you choose? I don't know how to answer that. It, it depends. Boy. Hard to say. It's really hard to say because some of that would be a matter of choosing where I'd like to live and some of it would be a matter of choosing what kind of college I'd like to be teaching in. That's, I, I don't really know how to answer that. I think I'd like to teach in England. And as a matter of fact, going back to that other question, Marlboro had a, a, an arrangement with a small college in London called Huron University a number of years ago, and I did have the opportunity to go there for a summer and to teach a class. Why? Why? Yes. Why what? I guess why you could. Why would you like want to teach in England? To teach in England? I don't know. Because that reminded me of the fact that I taught there before, and that was a really enjoyable experience. So, you know, we like to travel, and I'd like to teach somewhere that would give me the opportunity to travel either to some place I've been before and liked, or to travel to some place some place new. What courses would you want to offer and why? If I were teaching at a, a yeah, university? So. Yeah, well, I guess I would want to offer, you know, some courses uh, similar to ones that I've taught before. I don't know that I have a a brand new course idea that I haven't had a chance to to teach. Uh, hard hard to say. I would probably go back to some courses that I've taught before that I've enjoyed quite a lot. From the perspective of when you were teaching full time, yeah. would you please describe a typical day at work as a teacher from when you arrive at the college until you leave for home? Right. Well, the teaching schedule here is pretty individualized. The faculty set their own schedules and they make their own arrangements with students. So my own schedule might be very different from other faculty members, but I usually taught two or three classes a semester, and those classes usually met three or four hours a week. So they might meet two days a week. And then I would have tutorials, individual meetings with students who were doing independent study, and I might have, I don't know, six or eight, depending on how busy a semester it was. So I wouldn't have the same schedule every day. I probably would have three days when my schedule would be pretty busy, either in classes or tutorials, one day when I would probably try to stay away from campus so that I could get my work done, preparation and other things done at home. And then the faculty is, has quite a number of committees and other governance work that takes time in terms of meetings and so on. So I would schedule my time for those as well. What do you feel are the more important parts of your work as an educator? Uh, well, I guess, aside from maybe the obvious in terms of getting students excited about and learning about economics, I think that supporting the kind of interest that students bring to the college and finding ways to uh, enable them, to give them the skills to ask questions to find resources to think about the things that they're interested in in ways that are uh, productive and satisfying for them to make them learners to give them the capacity to go off from Marlboro and be lifelong learners. What people or experience would you say have influenced you in your life as a teacher? In my life as a teacher, I guess mostly other teachers and and my students. Um, there are certainly teachers that I've had all throughout my schooling who have been extremely influential, um, but also teachers of my subject economics. But also many of the students that I've had 
um, have been really influential in helping me think about what's important as a teacher, what's important as an economist, what's, what's important as a, a, as a mentor for students. Um, and what ways have they influenced you? That's pretty hard to say. I mean, I'm not sure that I have a simple good good answer for that. Um, when uh, uh, I don't know the answer to that. That's that's very very hard. I mean, I can think of specific examples maybe, but I can't think of kind of general general answers to that. Sorry about that. What are some parts of your job you really like? Well, I'd say that I really like most of my job. I mean, assuming you mean when I wasn't retired, while I was teaching full time, or even now when I'm teaching a new course. Um, I, I really like talking with colleagues here and with students about common interests and about common problems that we can work on together. I like it when students get excited about the things that I know and can help them understand. Are there parts of your job you dislike or find less pleasant, but you do anyway, anyway because it's part of your job? Hmm. It sort of depends how busy I am overall, because there's no part of the job that I dislike. Sometimes the job seems overwhelming and that there are too many conflicting responsibilities and not enough time, maybe sometimes to feel like I can do all the parts of my job as well as I'd like to. So it's not that there are parts that I don't like so much, is that uh, sometimes the workload is, is challenging. What are some of the ways the job of an educator has changed over your career? That's kind of hard to say because in the meantime I've been changing. So it's a little hard to know whether the way that I perceive the job of an educator is due to the fact that I've been an educator for the number of years that I have or because the kind of students that come to the college have changed or because the kinds of the amount of preparation that students bring to the college in general has changed having to do with their high schools having to do with technology that they have available to them. It's, it's really, it's hard to know. It's hard to know. In what ways have your students changed over the course of your teaching career? Right. Well, that's sort of another way of asking the same question. And I guess it's a little, it's hard to say for me because partly I think back on my early years of teaching and I possibly sort of romanticize it. And so I think, well, things were different then than they are now, but I don't think they really were. I mean, students may have been prepared differently because their high school curricula might have been different, or Marlboro might have attracted a different kind of student, uh, but I don't think so much. Uh, I think the challenge, as always, is to meet students where they are in terms of their um, their life experience, their knowledge, their interests, and to help them develop the skills and knowledge to accomplish what they would like to accomplish as students. What have your recent students' plan tutorials been about? Well, because it's been a few years since I've had planned tutorials before I retired, um, I have to think back a little bit in terms of what recent students were doing, but um, I have worked with students who were interested in uh, international food security. I've had students who were interested in some ideas about the history of economics. I've worked with um, students who have had interest in nonprofit organizations and with uh, economic development. Um, qu quite a range of, 
quite a range of subjects. What do you want a plan student who has worked with you to understand about economics or learning in general? Well, um, I, I want a, a plan student in economics to be familiar with the history of economics and the kinds of concerns that economists over the decades and over the last couple of centuries have brought to the discipline. I want them to be um, intellectually curious. I want them to be ambitious in terms of what they want to understand. Um, I don't know. What else? What have some of your former students gone on to do? Well, they've gone on to be lawyers and they've gone on to be, right now I have uh, several students who are doing graduate work in economics, one who's doing graduate work in, uh, in development policy, international development policy. I've had students who are uh, in the field of environmental policy in general. Some of them were teachers. What would you say are some of the unique qualities of Marlborough College? Well, aside from its size, which is sort of obvious, I think that the unique qualities are that it's largely a self-governing community and the faculty operates uh, as a confederation of independent teachers. It's not highly structured in terms of bureaucracy. We don't have academic departments. Faculty are quite autonomous in making decisions about what courses to teach, about the terms on which they work with students, about how to collaborate with one another, how to balance their teaching with their research. Um, and so I think Marlboro is quite distinctive both in terms of how the faculty operates and in terms of the expectations that we have for students and the kind of independence over the course of their years here. What are some of the challenges that, the, that small liberal arts colleges face today and what do you see as the future of Marlboro? Wow. Well, I think some of the challenges that small liberal arts colleges face have to do with the larger conversation in the country about the value of the liberal arts, which I think is, is sometimes undervalued, and I think that there is a focus on career preparation and on economic security in a way that challenges the primary structure and goals of Marlboro. And I think sometimes it's a, it, we have to work hard to represent the value of what we do uh, in a way that continues to draw the excellent students here that we've had in the past. <clears throat> what people or experiences would you say have influenced you in your personal life? <laughs> That's pretty hard to say. Well, I certainly have to say that um, um, my wife and family have been extremely important to me over the years. And uh, being in a community for as long as we have and being... Um, able to form the kinds of friendships that we've formed with people in town and people in southern Vermont in general, combined with long-term relationships that we've had with friends from growing up in Los Angeles or from school in various places, has been um, extremely influential and supportive to me. In what ways have they influenced you? Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that exactly. It's, it's a little hard to say. I, I can't 
can't think of anything. Uh, they certainly help me remember that work is not the only thing that there is for me to do in this world, uh, to give me a little perspective on the importance of um, living my life fully and having as many different kinds of experiences as I can, spending time with family and friends. Now that you're not teaching full time, you've been exploring pottery and with making collage. With whom have you studied these art forms? Well, as I mentioned before, I did take some art classes when I was an undergraduate, and so as I started to retire, I thought, well, that would be a pretty interesting thing for me to do, is to go back and pick up some of the work that I was doing all those years ago. So um, I had the opportunity <clears throat> in talking with the, my colleague Martina, who was teaching ceramics at the time, um, to audit and take a couple of classes from her, which I did and I enjoyed thoroughly. And uh, also uh, with a potter named Megan, who was here at the time when Martina was on leave. Um, then I decided I should expand a little bit and try some other visual arts. And I did a printmaking class with Kathy Osman, who was on the faculty here, and I found that extremely exciting and interesting. Um, and then I decided to start working on collages on my own, which is what I've been doing for the last year or so, or six months or a year. And I'm hoping in the near future to come back to the studio at the college and do some more classes. Okay. Do you plan to exhibit your work? Are you working for your own creative enjoyment? Well, I'd say Primarily, I'm working for my own creative enjoyment, but I would certainly like to have the opportunity to <clears throat> exhibit some of my work if I could figure out how to make that happen. What are some of your favorite artists? Ooh. <clears throat> I should have prepared something. You know, it's very hard for me to identify particular artists who have been influential um, because I keep finding new people whose work I really admire and whose work I learn from. Um, I keep telling myself that I need to pay more attention to the body of work that's out there that might be informative to me and I haven't done that very systematically. And it's something that I'd like to do. Is there anything else about your work or your life that you'd like to mention but I haven't asked mm. about? Oh. I, you know, there are all kinds of ways that I spend time other than the things that you've asked me about. So, I don't know what else you'd like to know. You know, we, I like to garden like to kayak, like to hike, and spend a lot of time outdoors to the extent that I can. So there's certainly that. Um, we like to travel, as I think I mentioned before, and uh, spend time with friends and family. And I think I could use more time if I had it. Thank you very much for your time. Well, you're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you.